for Tops Crown Baseball, full hobby case, pick your team number two. Full case, pick your team number two. Everything, everything, everything ships. Tops Crown Hobby, let's do it. Can't believe I almost opened up the wrong case again with Tops Crown Hobby. Tops Crown Soccer. Disaster averted. Uh, you pro I was going to ask you, John, if you're in, you're still in, if he's still in the chat. I was going to ask him if he had any drama with parents or anything in the. In, T-ball there, but probably not. It's probably a little bit too young for any sort of real drama going on. There you go. Come up with some contenders offers. Yeah, let's go. Come on now. I already had some of the cheapest prices on contenders. I do realize the price, you know, some, some prices have dropped on, on contenders boxes. Um, but I already had, mine were below market and then uh, had some of the best prices um, on contenders based off a of great comp. Um, and then, yeah, it just wasn't moving. So I added the first off the line box, still not moving too much. So just, yeah, like I said, we'll just take the L on it, give you guys some good deals and get it rolling here, hopefully as soon as possible. Jeez. Yeah, with with um, so my son, he's already done. He's done some baseball stuff. Most of what Paxton has done so far, um, because of him being so young, like some of it is mo is more of like just like a skills, you know, skills practice or whatever. Where they're not really facing other people or other teams um, besides football. He's done some soccer stuff, which is just, again, it was just like skills and the kids would kind of face each other, not really like other teams or anything, just kind of face each other in practice. And then did a little bit of baseball skills and basketball skills stuff, but nothing has been besides football. And he, he, he's done karate, baseball, soccer, basketball, and then football. But the football is the only one so far that's been like – the real deal, you know. Um, I think he might do wrestling at, at after football, um, but he's still he. I mean, he's going into first grade. He just got done with kindergarten, so he's he's just so young. So, but um, yeah, with football, it's definitely way different. Yeah, as you can imagine, football is definitely a different animal. Well. I'd definitely say, well, I don't know. I was gonna say, it's unlike any any other sports, but I can see wrestling gets pretty crazy with parents, you know what I mean? And I know baseball does too with all the different travel ball teams and all that kind of stuff, but I don't know, football is definitely, definitely crazy. And especially at this age too, um, this is where it get, it's crazy. Youth football is like, you know, once you're in high school, it's a little different. Like maybe there's one dad that's chirping the coach about playing time or something like that. But high school football is a little different. But with youth, youth football, yeah, it, it can get a little crazy. Rizzo to 125. Hockey, I'm just not that familiar with hockey, so I didn't group that in. But, yeah, we have one kid, He's on. he does hockey. He's you could argue he's the best kid on our team so far. We haven't, we don't get pads on until next week, so hard to tell without pads. But uh, Bitto for the Athletics rookie auto, base rookie auto. Um, but he comes from freaking hockey practice to football practice, like boom, like they get him in the car and he's like ten minutes late for practice, and it's like crazy. He's like drenched in drenched drenched in sweat, and then he's like the best on our team. He's like. 
faster than everybody else after he just completed a whole hockey practice. And he's like killing it. It's his first year with football too. It's crazy. I'm like, holy smokes. I mean, it makes sense. You know, I'm, I'm sure I don't have firsthand experience or anything, um, but I am sure a, that hockey is, that is massive benefit to a football player be playing hockey too, you know, Reese Olsen to 150 for the Tigers. I didn't, I didn't even know they had hockey that young up here. I know they do it, you know, some other places. I didn't even realize they, they could do hockey for like second graders up here, but yeah, he comes like drenched in sweat from hockey and then rolls into football practice and he's beating everybody in all the different races and sprints that we're doing. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, right now I'm, I'm this just a situation where we have a kid. We have a weight weight limit. It's a seventy five pound weight limit for being in a skilled being in a skilled position. And uh, we got one kid. He was like our star running back last year, and um, I think uh, with COVID happening and stuff i think his mom held him back like started him late for kindergarten because of the covid situation and everything which i'm sure i'm surprised there's not more of that that uh went on during that time frame but either way so i think he, he started a year late so like technically he should be in third grade this year but he's in second grade so our league is grade based and not age based so ours is kindergarten through second so even though he's like third grade age he should be a one grade up he's second grade so He's a fast kid and everything, but he's he's a bigger kid, and uh, he hits hard. And he, you know, he does a good job, um, but his weight because he's technically supposed to be in third grade, or yeah, technically supposed to be in third grade, his weight is now coming in to be an issue now. You know, um, so he's like over that seventy-five pound weight limit, and he wants to run the ball, but he's there's no way he's going to be able to drop some weight to get under that. Not that I even want. A young second grader to drop weight that's never a good thing I mean you could do a little bit of stuff you know make sure he's doing you know some extra conditioning cutting out the junk food you could lose a little bit of weight but anything other than just that like simple stuff I definitely wouldn't want to be a part of it but so it's very 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 unlikely that he's gonna make weight so he's gonna have to play on the line he can play anywhere on defense but on offense he can't play in any of the skilled positions and he was like our star running back last year so it's like heartbreaking to not be able to use him and he's like upset about it and everything and so there's one thing that we're trying to deal with right now because like during the beginning of this summer and everything it was like this could be an issue. We're going to monitor it, yada, yada, yada. But as we're getting closer and closer to weigh-ins, it's like there's just no way. But, yeah, I, if people do that specifically for sports. Well, they'll, they'll hold a kid back, um, you know, hold a kid back for, for sport, you know, hold a kid back. And then, obviously, they're bigger and better in sports because of that because they got an extra age on them. Now, granted, as they get older and older, that gap's going to close. But... People, people do do that quite frequently. I, it just seems crazy to me. Um, like I said, they did it in regards to the, the COVID thing, which, like I said, I was surprised I didn't have any other kids on my team that are in a similar situation because, you know, obviously that's only going to be for, like, one or two classes worth of kids, that, the, the COVID situation. So, but either way. Um, but, yeah, I, I there's some kids that we faced last year. There was this one kid on the, champ, the team that won the Super Bowl. This kid was, he, he looked like he was in high school, dude, playing kindergarten through second. Like, I, I know everybody has those stories that I want, but I'm telling you, this kid was no joke. Like, I swear, dude, he, he, I caught him smoking cigarettes by the locker room. Like, he was that big. And he was smoking cigarettes, and he had a fucking 40-ounce old English. He was huge. And, yeah, they ended up winning the Super Bowl and all that, you know. Judge negative sweet for the Yankees. Um, they could, but now you're playing up. They, they could, they could. 
they could do that but the, just the way that the grade base it works out like grade base like it just wasn't obviously an option initially and now he would get bumped up and i don't know it, it, that's just like the dilemma that we're in right now it's like what exactly do we do jose tenya the 499 refractor autograph for cleveland going out to my man john g yeah so it could that that's that's an option it's just I don't know. That's just what we're trying to figure out. Yeah, well, most stuff is like that. Like, even, like, with a lot of youth football, you hear a lot of, like, you know, 7U and 8U and 9U. It's age-based. But the league that we're in is grade-based. So, like, my team's kindergarten through second. And all the other grades, it's two grade levels. Mine's three because of kindergarten, which, like I've said on here before, like, the kindergartners are... It's just getting them acclimated to football and everything, but they don't really, they don't get any serious playing time. Julian to 99 Greenway for the Twins. We do a thing, um, it's like a JV squad, but we call it the fifth quarter. So after the game, we run a fifth quarter with just like the smaller kids, kindergarten or whatever. It all depends on if the other team has enough kids. Like if the other team only has like 14 or 15 kids, like obviously they had to utilize their kids in the game, so we're not going to be able to run a fifth quarter. But some of these crews are like, they're rocking like 40 deep, dude, 45 deep. So we, we rock, we do a little fifth quarter action and let the little kids at least get some playing time and whatnot. But, um, yeah, but yeah, that's what I said. We, we just have a, a little bit of a dilemma there with him. It's like, what is the best option here? But I can tell you right now, if he's on the line, which obviously I want to keep him on my team. He's in second grade. That's where he goes. I understand that he's, you know, technically third grade age, but, like, he's in second grade. So let's just keep him because if not, now, now you're going to have to be – you're going to have to move him up all the time. Like, every time he's going to have to play up, which not – technically is not playing up, but, you know, it gets a little confusing there. But, you know, so I say we just keep – I'd like to keep him. In the end, it's, the, you know, not exactly my decision to make, but I'd like to see – him stay with us down at D3. We're the Division Three level. Stay with us at D3. He'll have to rock out on the line. However, the situation is going to be, it's going to be, we're going to run right off of his butt all the time. Like, I would like to have him run the ball, but if I can't have him run the ball, put him on the line, and I know he can block, I will just run the ball right off of his butt 90% of the time. I got two big kids, bigger kids, him and another kid that are, on the bigger side that are fast and strong and they're going to be able to block pretty well put them right there tackle and guard run right behind them as much as possible because we got another kid this is his first year playing like i was telling you that that the kid plays plays hockey and he is fast and i know like i can just tell he's going to hit hard He's going to be able to tackle really well playing hockey. Like I can just tell that his hockey skills are going to translate and, and translate into football and make him really good football player just like right off the rip. First year playing, he, I can just tell he's going to be he's going to be the star of the show. So I can't wait to give him the ball and let him just run over some kids. Figure, figure out that situation, see what works best. But multiple, there's different people that have different opinions, and yeah, and we're working through that. Got a little orange action coming up here, boy, boys. Looks like an orange, looks like a true orange. Let's see what we got here. Come on, give us an orange auto. True orange, Cedric Mullins to 25 for the Orioles. Come on, man. Cedric. 
San Francisco, Georgia. I just hope we don't have another scenario like we did last year. We had a, one of our games last year. It was like over an hour away. Some of these games, dude, we're in the best league in the state of Pennsylvania. Maybe I can't exactly say that. At least on the, what are we, West Western PA, we're the best league in Western Pennsylvania, and we're in the highest division of the best league. So it's like real deal football. It's like, this is no joke. Abbott to 250 purple. Like I said, some of these teams are rolling 40 deep plus on, on kindergarten through second. Like, it's it's some real deal shit. I had uh, one of my um, buddies, he moved up here from Texas. And his son plays football for not, he's not in our league. It's a, he's like a couple towns over. It's actually where I grew up. Um, well, not I didn't play youth football there, but I went to high school and did all that. But um, his son plays for that team, and he's like, like Texas football is, is definitely a lot different than what he was seeing there. And then um, we invited him to uh, come to one of our games, and uh, watch one of our games. And they came, and he was like. That is literally Texas football. He's like, there's some real tills football right there. So I was like, hell yeah. But uh, yeah, we play. So it's it's no joke. So we we got to take it pretty serious, or else you know kids can get hurt if, if you know we're not teaching them the right thing, not taking it pretty serious. But last year, like I said, we we travel fairly fairly far. Like travel. Uh, I think the farthest we have to go is like hour and 20 or hour and 30 or something. I think it's about an hour and 30 to Seneca Valley, I believe. About an hour and 30. But this one place we went to is like, you know, somewhere between an hour and hour and 30. And um, we ended up, we were, the coaches decided that we were going to do a fifth quarter at the end. But we decided that day. Um, a lot of times it's decided the week of. But I don't think our coach had a contact for their coach. Something. I'm not really sure what all the details were. But uh, So we decided at the game, we are like, hey, we can do a fifth quarter after this if you guys are cool with it. Okay. So then some of the kids never got into the actual game. It was a close game. They never got in because we knew we were having a fifth quarter. So it was like, it's a close game. Let's not put those kids in. We need to try to actually win. We know we're having the fifth quarter. So if they don't play, it's okay. We'll get, do the fifth quarter. Well, it was towards the end of the game, and one of the moms of one of the players that was not going in, that didn't get in, but she was a first grader that was not ready. So in the end, my standpoint on it is, is I don't care if you're – I have a second grader on the team this year. He's not ready. He's just not ready. Like, you, there's, you can only coach so much, right? This kid is just not ready. He, he doesn't want to be there. I could tell. Like, he – He's, I, I don't know if it was his idea to play football or somebody else's his dad or something. He's, he's not ready. Like, he's in second grade, too. Like, kindergartner's definitely not ready. Sometimes there's some first graders who aren't ready. He was a first grader who wasn't ready last year. Um, and his mom came down from the bleachers down to the bottom of the bleachers and, like, screamed out at us about, I drove, we drove all the way here, and he's not playing, and this and that. And we were like, oh, my God. Like, that is so embarrassing. Like, it was embarrassing for her, embarrassing for our organization. It was just embarrassing. And she's going to scream at us about her son playing. And then in the end, they have a fifth quarter, and he played the whole fifth quarter. It's like, geez, oh, man, lady. Give an arrow a refractor for the Rays. Kaiser, Kaiser, rookie auto for the Rockies. First time I think I pulled him. Yeah, hopefully we do not get into a Oh my 
gosh. Cuss at the kids? My goodness. I mean, I might drop a an ass here or there or something, you know, let, let's kick these kids' ass. I haven't done it yet, but I'm sure it, at halftime or whatever in a close game, I might give give a little encouragement and drop a little ass or something. But, dude, cussing the kids out, that's crazy. Fellas, what do we have here? 1989 Topps Baseball Chrome Layer Variation Black Wave. We have a 101 here. The Black Wave 101. Mookie Betts for the Dodgers. Oh my gosh. Did we just hit another 101 Mookie Betts? It's a black a black wave. 89 tops chrome layer variation black wave. Out of 10. Black wave out of 10. Mookie Betts. Thanks, Evan. Thanks for the assist there, my friend. Out of 10. Dodgers. Lucas. Let's go, Lucas. It already says Dodgers on there. We pick up two autos there? Yeah, I think it's two autos. Oh wait, is this? Well, I guess it doesn't say auto on here. It's gotta be auto though, right? It doesn't say, it says your redemption card, congratulations, you are due to receive a 1989 Topps Baseball Chrome Layer Variation Black Wave Parallel of Mookie Betts. It doesn't exactly say auto though so I don't think that that's an auto right because I said we got two autos I don't think that's an auto why why is the very why is it not it's not an auto ah interesting I wonder why they oh because I see a layer huh so none of the none of these layer variations are, are live all, all of them are redemption interesting didn't quite catch that initially and then I said about having two autos and I was like wait a second huh that is interesting redemption for a non-auto that is interesting they're all redemptions okay so it must be something up with those maybe they weren't ready by the time production came around or yeah maybe they're thicker and they don't maybe they're just like you know super prone to, to potential damage I don't know I'd have to see one of them to kind of get an idea of what the thought process was was you know in making those uh, all redemptions. Oh, oh, Corey Seager. Uh, what? Yeah, that's interesting. There, was not aware of that. Yeah, was not aware of that. Interesting. Gotcha. Yeah, they do. Like I said, with the glass cards, yeah, like. A little Bobby Witt Jr. 199. Yeah, like, I think Panini does the right thing with those glass cards, you know, making them a redemption because, obviously, glass, potential breakage, yada, yada, yada. So maybe it's another scenario like that where these cards are prone to potential damage, so they're trying to keep it, and you know, maybe they can, so then they can, you know, ship it in a mag or whatever, so. All right, Tops. We'll give you a break on this one. i like to see what that looks like, though. Yeah, oh, that's a good. That's a good thought. Dude, like, um, so my the co-head coach that I'm working with here for football. I know I'm talking a lot about football, but it's just been on my been on my mind, fellas. We're about to get into the meat and potatoes of football here next week, man. Full week. Foosball. Got a lot of football on my mind right now. Just came back from practice. Well, maybe not just came back, but we had football practice tonight. Um, he has been really good. He he played linebacker in college. What I think he's at a D2 school or something like that. It's not like he was like freaking Manti Teo or something, you know. Potential Heisman linebacker or something, but it's a guy... Knows football. Last year, he was not happy with the coaching, which I, I was on the coaching staff, and I fully agree. <laughs> That's what I was telling him at the beginning of all this. I was like, dude, please do not give me a fresh slate here. I, I, was, I was on that crew last year, but I had no say in anything that went on. 
If I made suggestions, they fell on deaf ears. I was not a fan of anything. I was in good spirits at the beginning of the season, but by the end of the season, I was like not happy with how everything was going and just getting like depressed about it or whatever. It's like, give me a fresh slate because um, I'm not, you know, I'm not Bill Belichick over here, but I know a good amount of, of the basics and fundamentals of football. But he has been awesome and he has like a lot of really good drills from playing college football at the college, you know, college, collegiate level. He's like, we're, we should be a very good tackling team. He's got very good like tackle progression drills that we're teaching the kids how to properly tackle and everything. Something that we did not do last year. And it's been really awesome. Um, and um, the reason why I didn't bring that up was, like I said, he, he was pretty vocal last year, at least in the stands, like maybe not directly to our face or whatever, but in the stands about not liking how the kids were being coached and everything. And like I said, I could definitely get on that. And I was even on the coaching staff. It was, it was so bad. Like I didn't even want to be a part of it. Like I didn't even want my name on it. I just got like grouped in. And then by the time I was like in it, I was already in it. You know, I was like, I was already in it. There's nothing I can do. Foscu for the Rangers rookie auto base auto. You can step it up on the autos here, boys, for sure. Yeah, it was just like one of those scenarios where I was already, by the time I realized how crappy it was, I was already like two in it. I couldn't get out. Like, but um, but it's been great. Me and him working in tandem so far. Yeah, and like I could already tell, like his football knowledge is definitely better than mine. Like when it comes to like the fundamentals of football, like I feel pretty good about it, but. He's, he's even opened my eyes up on a couple of things. Contreras to 99. I think we've been able to work. We've been working pretty well together because I think I think I uh, have an edge on him in, in regards to kind of be, getting on, you know, this young age group's level and stuff like that and, 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 and um, things along that end being able to connect with the kids or whatever, and he's kind of bringing some more high-level football analysis to it all, Abreu to 99. And we've been we've been pretty good little yin and yang together, a little one-two punch so far, so. We'll see, hopefully it turns into the, some W's on, this, on the board, you know. Yeah, that sounds like a great thing to do. Like I said, we are in the premier Western PA football league and at the highest division. So it is not a cakewalk. It is some serious youth football.
Well, boys, the autograph so far, first five boxes, nothing to get excited about. Nice hit, apparently, there for Mookie Betts and the Dodgers. Not a whole lot else here. Let's see if we can turn it up here. Let's go on the contenders, I'm telling you. Let's go. Jackson Merrill image variation for the Padres. Yuki with the Padres. Blackburn to 75 on the blue wave. Hunter Goodman for the Rockies to 499 refractor auto. What are you saying, JT? JJ McCarthy got a kaboom for absolute, and it looks nice. What? What are you talking about? PCA for the Cubs, all etch rookie rush. Uh, Willie Adams has preview cards. Oh, I didn't see that. Not like not collegiate ones, right?
vote vote for GGG and what? I would like to see a super though. We need to pick it up here. We got a couple decent little things here and there. Not much on the autos. Let's see a big auto here. I'd love to see a super fractor auto. <laughs> you say that all you say things similar to that in the chat all the time about GGG money. I, I don't even know. I don't know what that is about. Jackson Holiday on the image variation, Orioles, Baltimore. Baroa, Seattle, rookie auto. Henry Davis, nice little true purple refractor non-auto for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Makachi. The 350. What do we got? Five more to go here, boys, on the TC Hobby. Everyone get ready. As soon as we're done with this, I, I want to be flooded with offers for Contenders Football. Flooded in the chat with offers. Flooded in the chat. Yeah, I mean, in terms of running a break room and 24-pack hobby boxes, not super optimal, but yeah, that's never going to happen. You gotta have you gotta have those hobbies, you know. Grab a hobby box from your card card shop, sit there and rip open some packs. It'll take a while, not just one little quick rip. People like to sit there. Plus, you can sell the packs individually and everything. 
Jordan Lawler, five out of five, red wave rookie autograph for the D backs, my man Evan P, baby. Let's go. Five out of five, red wave, refractor auto, GT, Evan P, D backs. No, oh, thank you, dude. Don't thank me. Thank you. Sorry about that, boys. Show my wife something. Back to it. TC. Baseball. We knew something was coming, boys. Let's face it. We got a Brian Reynolds to 350. The way the autos were coming out of this case, something was a brewing. I was hoping for a super fractor, but, you know, we'll take a red wave. A little green refractor here of Jose Altuve to 99 for the Houston Astros. Top scrum authentic memorabilia. Something was a brewing. Fingers crossed on the, on the super, but she red ain't bad. Oh, you bought it, Chris. Wow. When I tell Sacker, Sacker just probably fight you. You might have just you might have just made an op.
might now have an op. Marte for the Reds, all etch rookie rush. Corbin Carroll, Carroll Green to 99. Oh, sure, sure you did. Langford Refractor. Oh, sure. I gotta get, I still gotta get that, that one. I hit, I got that. No one took them, no one took the Angels. Then one Bowman break we had, and I got that gold rookie auto of his. Haven't quite looked at it to be graded, but I think uh, definitely just send it in. Double check, but should be pretty good. Send that bad boy to get graded. Fingers crossed. I don't know nothing about him, but I know you you have I know you have mentioned about him in the chat on a couple of, of uh, occasions. So. Rigged, everything's rigged, dude. We can't even have an election without it being rigged. Just joking, just joking, my friends. Just joking. Just joking. Do you guys see about? Uh, And I, I knew that this was like, we were going to get to this point at some point. Like, if you if you do anything and sell a large amount of, like, cards and stuff, like, this thought has definitely popped in your head that somebody could use one of those, like, a, it's not a CT scanner. I forget what the word is. But one of those, like, scanners, like, at the airport and scan, like, cases of cards, you know? And people apparently were doing it with flawless uh, cards where they could, you know, use one of those scanner devices or whatever and uh, see if, like, obviously you can't see exactly what's in the case, but you could see if it's like a logo man or whatever, because obviously the cards are have like a dip, different design to them or whatever. And um, but apparently somebody like sent a video of somebody using one of those scanners on a case of flawless and seeing it like being able to identify that there was a logo man inside, which one, you have to have access to one of those machines and things like that. But I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, like, like these cards are not cheap cards. It's not, it's not that crazy for somebody to invest money into one of those machines and scan flawless and this and that. That's why you gotta, like any of those high-end products, I would not be touching anything right now, uh, any high-end product at this point in time no way in hell right out of the gate and i get my stuff straight from distributors straight from manufacturers what have you i feel totally comfortable whatever but after a couple weeks a couple months whatever oh my goodness you don't know what, where those cases have been what people have done like, shh, wouldn't be touching that shit anybody else see that on social media somebody had a video where they were using one of those scanners on a case of flawless seeing and and identifying that there was a logo man in there. But how do you, I, I just, I, I know that like, for instance, like, you know, like the shit at the airports, like you can see like an outline of stuff and you like I can see how like for flawless basketball for instance you know I keep using that example where like obviously the cards and the way that the card is its indentation in there that you can tell it's a logo man patch versus you know whatever other you know sets they have but like you could you can't see what it actually is so in that scenario there for those cards like how do they how how, how do they have a device that's able to look into something and still be able to give you like a clear picture of what's inside. Like there's, there's, uh, uh, like that seems crazy to me. Somebody using something like that to identify, like for for a certain card type, you know, that don't that the outline of the card or whatever looks different than any other card. That makes sense. But like something like that where you could like 
look into a Pokemon pack and be like, oh, there's a first edition Charizard in there. Like how I don't how in the hell would that work? I'm not saying you that that, that that's fake or anything. I'm just saying that is crazy. But I'm telling you, with the amount of money that's in cards, it's not crazy to think that there's people out there doing that shit. That's why you got to be very cautious on who you're buying from. And like I said, Garrett Colda 75. After a couple months, like any of those high end, yeah, there's no way I would be touching any of that shit anymore. After seeing that video, uh-uh, ain't no way. Somebody gets some stuff right out of the gate from distributor, whatever, okay, totally cool. After a couple months, you don't know how many hands them things have been through, who looked at what, I don't know, DeLuca to 150. Pokemon is because the foiling, so you can see the shape of the non-foil outline of which, hmm. Interesting, that is interesting. That is interesting. That is interesting. CFB 25? Yeah. Paris to 199 for the Angels. Aqua Wave Auto. Yeah, I did get... Uh, NCA. Uh, I just got it on Sunday. I haven't really played it much. I've probably put in like three hours or maybe maybe four hours max on it. So I haven't really played it too much. I haven't really had much time. But I did get it and I am trying to play it as much as I can. I just haven't had a whole lot of opportunity to between this and my son's football team and vacation last week, national this week. doesn't ask those questions I'm down to play some people though once I have some time Sunday nights are usually pretty good because I'm not live on Sunday nights so Sunday nights are typically I'll be able to put in some, put in some times, some time on the CFB. Twenty-five clock in for a shift on Sunday nights. Uh, it's like two hours and some change, so it's not far. So I'll be there. I'm leaving Friday morning, so I'll be there Friday, Saturday, come back on Sunday. Wager, yeah, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna, he's gonna trick me. He's probably like some freaking professional co college football player or something. CFB 25 professional. I'm terrible so far. I've not tried Heisman yet. I tried All American and I am trash, absolute trash. 
Like, there was definitely a bit of a learning curve. I still got to figure out shit. Terrible on the option. I like to play with West Virginia. The whole playbook is RPOs. I have not mastered that whatsoever yet. I am, like, trash, trash. Like, I dropped, I what, Heisman, All-American. I thought I was hopping right on in. I was actually talking shit. Somebody was talking to me about playing on varsity or freshman. Paris, base auto for the Angels. Literally talking crap on me about uh, somebody, uh, was it you, JT? Maybe about playing on freshman or varsity or whatever. And I was literally like, I was like, oh no, oh my God. I play on Heisman on NCAA 14, yada, yada, yada. I was talking all this game. I am trash. I play on All-American and lost. Cannot win on All-American. Um, little Ellie. Gold, Cheerio, true gold, non auto to fitty for the Brewers. I love gold. And yeah, right now I've been rocking the varsity. <laughs> Freshman's too easy. Like, freshman is just too easy because it's like if you just get to the outside, like, you, you're got your character, the, the player runs faster than the other, than the defense. So it's like, it's just way too easy. But. I've been rocking the varsity. Granted, I do think it's a little bit easy, but I need to hop back in on All American. I've just been trying to learn. Like, like I said, I still can't even. I'm like terrible with the run RPOs and everything. I'm just trying to like learn stuff right now. I'm like still in that like I just need to learn. But I thought I was hopping right in. Like I didn't think I'd hop right in on varsity, but I'm like, oh, I'm All American for sure. And psh, I I have not won a game on All American yet. Rodriguez, the 299 Pirates. Granted, I haven't played that many games. I mean, it's hard to say that whenever you played like three games. Fantasy football. No, I never I never get going on any fantasy football stuff. Um I used to, then I started doing breaks, and then I just have never had the time to commit to any fantasy football league let alone running my own fantasy football league so we, we've never done that I, I don't anticipate doing that but yeah I've been playing on varsity trying to trying to learn Granted, I'm doing pretty well. Able to win some games just because, like, some of it is like, I'm, it's like, I'm just catching some good plays. Like, I know with West Virginia, what was, what was one? Playing on varsity. I'll run, like, you know, all four verticals. Everyone goes way down the field. Defense is in zone coverage. I can give it a little bit of time. I can, and then I just take off with Garrett Green for 15 yards. Like, you know, some just some sneaky stuff like that. But, like, yeah. It's definitely a learning curve. And it definitely, you know, I think with 14, it's just like I've played it for so long and put in so many hours on 14 that it's like I know all the plays that work. I know, like, just how, like, just how the defense reacts to things and how where to position my players on on defense or you know an option team or this or that it's just like just so much knowledge already knowing how to do stuff on there but this game it is it is a lot different and like i said i still got i just got so much to learn still so much to learn Oh, there he is, you dirty dog. You are a dirty, dirty dog.
Oh my goodness. That I went, um, couldn't find my freaking gardening gloves. Going out there and clean up my mulch beds a little bit today. They look like absolute trash. I mean, it doesn't even look like I did anything. They just so bad. I let them get out of control this summer so far. I'm kicking myself in the ass. It is what it is. But, um, let's go do a little bit of work. Couldn't find my gardening gloves. And I was getting all mad about it and whatnot. So I went, ran down to the closest store to me, the local DG, Dollar General, the old trusty DG. Dollar General everywhere you look around here. Oh, JP Martinez stuck to the back there. Base of rookie autograph for Texas. And I figured they had some gardening stuff. Luckily they did, but went in there. So I got some gloves. Luckily I got I got myself a pair and I got my wife a pair. I get home, my pair of gloves, two right gloves. I was so mad. I was like, well, I'm going back down there. And I was like, I don't want to drive all the way down there. So then I was rocking one right glove of my gloves and then a, a, a floral left glove. That was supposed to be my wife's. Yeah, they had, they gave me two, the pack was two right handed gloves. I was like, you mother. Vlad Jr. to 199 for the Blue Jays. Absolutely, yeah, that was definitely a DG fail. $3 pair of two right handed gloves. And you can't even, because of you know how they are, the, like the rubber gloves or whatever, you can't even, you, there's nothing you can do about Like, there's, they don't fit. It's just nothing you can do about that. Just absolutely screwed. Neil, negative. more to go yeah yeah I'm sure they'll do that to go to a comedy show have not been to one in quite some time actually not too too long ago me and my brother went to that Adam Sandler show in Pittsburgh but before that it was quite some time
weird. Some of these cases, Walter for the Red Sox, rookie auto. Man, I mean, I know we hit a red, but man, these other auto is like nothing but just not base. How many base do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we only had base or refractor, one aqua wave to 199. Mostly everything's been base, and then obviously the red there, which I know is awesome, but man. Play day athletics to 350. Mauricio to 299 for the Mets. Rio Gold. Luki Betts. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, I know we're going to get some base autos, but man. It's like eight. And the big boy of the break right here, and it looks sick. Five out of five, red wave refractor. Rookie autograph of Jordan Lawler, D backs. All right, that concludes our Topps Chrome Baseball Hobby Case. This was break number two. Thank you.